I, I just would love to hear your thoughts about um, whether Bitcoin has actually been attacked in all the ways um, or in the most effective ways. Because one thing that makes sense to me as, you know, if I, for example, had an attack that was very effective, right, I wouldn't use it now when I can't profit from it. I would wait until I could profit from it, namely when a short market appeared where if I successfully executed the attack, I would make $10 million, $20 million, you know, any millions of dollars. So I'm just not, I, I, I get the analogy and what you're saying makes sense compared to distributed ledgers. I'm just wondering on your perspective of what happens when much more economic incentive via short markets appears for somebody who might have an attack to actually use it. That's, that's a really good point. And I, I think we should recognize, and let's be realistic here, Bitcoin has not been attacked in every way possible, and as much as it possibly can yet. And it certainly wasn't in the early days. Bitcoin had one unique advantage, which was this two-plus-year honeymoon period, when nobody thought it was important, or relevant, or even would work. Um, if at that time people had attacked it, it was it was much weaker, right? There were some horrific bugs in the early days, right? Um, and there are plenty of core developers here who can talk about some of the hilarious things, like for example, being able to create Coinbase with billions and billions of bitcoins in them. Oops, um, you know some of the validation rules slipped through blocks that had infinite coins in them, um, and and many other bugs. We got a honeymoon period then to fix the most egregious bugs. And we still have a honeymoon period now, because here is the hilarious thing. Most of these banks, most of these large organizations in finance, most of the central banks, they look at Bitcoin the way Walmart looks at a lemonade stand. And they are still laughing, which is great. I hope they keep doing that for two more years, three more years. Give us a bit more of a honeymoon period, so we can get even more robust because we really don't need concerted attacks right now although from another perspective i would rather have some of the attacks materialize now before we have mass adoption and a lot of users being disrupted but this is a this is a continuous process in a race the real issue here is the time scale right and the interesting implication what we're saying here has is that a lot of altcoins don't get that grace period anymore which is why it's a lot harder to build robust altcoins because one you don't get a grace period on mining if anybody thinks it's going to be valuable they're there uh, so it's not just like nobody noticed and you don't get a grace period on security anymore so if you've implemented things sloppily someone's going to find it in fact just the other day i i was reading this fantastic article about 42 coin are you familiar with 42 coin it's a it's an altcoin that was designed uh, to only ever have 42 coins. It currently has 48. <laughs> it would have taken two lines of code to constrain the mining algorithm so that after the initial process of mining the first 42 coins as promised, it stopped. And in fact, several people noticed that this was missing from the code, and they wrote to the developer who had since abandoned the project. And so nobody patched it, nobody upgraded these systems because they were really running in an isolated environment and not really participating in a real economy. So nobody fixed them, and then coin 43 was mined. And at that point, you have an existential crisis for this altcoin because it's no longer 42 coin. Um, this is going to keep happening, and it happens because there's not enough people interested in fixing the bugs. Um, you know, this is the other, uh, the flip side of this idea. It's really hilarious to me when you talk to companies and you say, "Hey, how about you open source your code?" And they say, "Oh my God, if we do that, people are going to see it, and they might use it without paying us." And the hardest thing to explain to a company that is doing software is, you wish people would see it and use it. 
Most likely, if you open source your code, like the other 700,000 projects on GitHub, no one will give a shit, and no one will use it. And you will not create a community. If you actually manage to get people to see it, use it, and create a developer community around it, congratulations, you are in the 1% of projects that have achieved that. It is a rare and difficult achievement. And in fact, Bitcoin has succeeded more in that than any of the altcoins, or to go back to my previous analogy, any of the permission ledgers would ever hope to have when they close themselves down from external scrutiny. <laughs>